Legally or illegally, more than ever, people will use this sophisticated spy equipment. And the ease with which your privacy can now be invaded may just shock you. There are pickup points on my head here feeding a computer. Think of this as a sort of a hand puppet, but instead of putting in my hand, I put my whole head into this thing. Many victims of the Oakland Berkeley Hills fire, as in many other fires, succumb not to burns, but smoke inhalation. It is hoped that these fire masks, even the very low-tech ones, will prevent such occurrences in the future. Hello, I'm Richard Hart. This is the next step in technology. Well, with Cold War over, the U.S. government is no longer a growth market for spy equipment. So the manufacturers of technology for eavesdropping and defense are going to try to sell their latest, hottest stuff to you and me. Who should be concerned? Muggers, yes. Your boss, maybe. But the babysitter, too. Technology designed to simplify your life, not to make your private life an open book. Well, we can arrange for a sweep if you'd like. Um, what threat level do you feel that you're at? People tend to, uh, you know, listen in on phone calls, um, look through windows, and so on and so on. It's been going on since the beginning of time. But whereas before you had to peep or eavesdrop yourself, today there are a lot of high-tech gadgets to do your snooping for you. Every time you make a phone call, it sends that information along. In other words, it dials this other number and automatically listens in on your line. Nasty little creature. People who want to spy on their spouses or spy on their business partner or spy on their neighbors can easily go to our friendly neighborhood surveillance supplier, Radio Shack as we like to call it, and pick up a number of devices. Now I've got to tell you this, Radio Shack isn't selling these for you to go out and spy on your neighbors. But let's face it, a lot of devices can be used that way. I mean, everything from their small tape recorders that can be left, oh, in a briefcase or under a pillow or behind after you leave someplace to fairly sophisticated devices that turn on the tape recorder every time a telephone is picked up in your house or your business, or of course anybody else's house or business that you've put this in. It's a very simple device to use. You just plug it into the phone line, you dial your phone number, and the phone doesn't ring. But what happens is it opens up the speaker on this particular unit and allows you to hear everything inside the room or in the house if you have a number of these. It's legal to listen on your own home. It would be absolutely illegal to plant this on someone else's phone and listen in to their conversations, their bedroom, or whatever. John Hancock designs and manufactures what he calls counterintelligence equipment. And no matter what illegal use you put it to, almost all of this equipment is legal to buy. For example, this is the recording briefcase. Drop it in a room. And with a remote control, you can begin the recording process. No one hears a thing, except you, up to 300 feet away. Of course, we'll need a picture of our subject, too, so we'll use the tiny video camera hidden behind this speaker. This is a typical pinhole lens. That's all it takes to see a full picture. This not only records, no, no, it broadcasts. Yeah, it's a little television station that's good for a mile away. Of course, if you can get even a little closer, you might be able to pick up a conversation on this, the Mont Blanc pin that isn't. Now, on the other hand, if you can get really close, might I suggest the button that is a bug. The warmest and fuzziest surveillance equipment is the nanny cam. That teddy bear is watching Aaron. And now Aaron's mother is watching a tape of the nanny who was watching Aaron. This one is designed to catch child abuse in the act. With all this surveillance equipment around, now the Joneses can keep up with James Bond. But if you're worried that a high-tech peeping Tom may be bugging you, just bug him back. It will tell you if anything's there instantly. And if you really want to bug somebody, shock him with stun apparel. This is a stun jacket. The jacket comes with a power supply, and woven into the fabric are flexible copper strips of positive or negative polarity. You carry this little transmitter in your hand, you hit the button, like so, and the jacket's activated now. And if I were to touch it, this is what I'd get, which definitely would ruin your day. On the other hand, there's this, the stun glove. Between these two electrodes, the same 150,000 volts, which comes from this on my belt. There's even high-tech gear for potential kidnap targets. In the unlikely event that they are abducted, 
many corporate executives and government officers are wearing shoes and boots like these. I don't have to do this with my hands, and I don't have to remove the boot. Bringing one near the other, which contains a magnet, pops off the heel. And hidden inside, your possible ticket out. A lockpick, money to bribe someone, a transmitter. Legally or illegally, more than ever, people will use this sophisticated spy equipment. And the ease with which your privacy can now be invaded may just shock you. It probably won't surprise you that this is not a real umbrella. It's called the Stunbrella. And the people who sell it, Tamiami Gun Sales of Florida, claim it will completely disable an attacker without causing permanent damage. It generates tens of thousands of volts of electricity using just one battery. Any volunteers? Next up, the latest in firefighting tech from satellites to smoke masks. If you're a state or a city official, you know there was a house here, but was it one story or two stories? Who lives here? There isn't an address left on a house for blocks around. And we'll see what's new in performance technology. They're alive! How you guys doing today? Coming up next, the real American cowboy on Rediscovering America. When you're flying north, fly the airline that leads the way with more comfort and more legroom on the only business class to more of Canada. Air Canada. It's a welcome departure. Some automakers would have you believe that total isolation from the road is the ultimate luxury. The Acura Legend was designed for a very different type of driver. One who believes that if a luxury car completely isolates you from the driving experience, it isn't really a driving experience. When you're flying north, fly the airline that leads the way with more comfort and more legroom on the only business class to more of Canada, Air Canada. It's a welcome departure. Wednesday, whether lounging poolside or modeling the latest fashion, their pampered pooch is running with a fast crowd. Discover a doggy dreamland when Mac and Muttley visit the Canine Spa. Then at 8.30, cute and cuddly, wet and pudgy, babies of all shapes and sizes, finding happy homes with foster moms. Visit Orphan Nurseries for all kinds when Loretta Swit hosts those incredible animals. Wednesday, beginning at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. In October of 1989, these hills in Oakland, California, erupted into the worst residential fire in U.S. history. They also became a testing ground for a number of new technologies that will make similar events less devastating. Satellites were used to identify missing homes. High-tech masks help firefighters breathe more easily. And spy planes were used to direct rescue operations. NASA research planes took the first high-altitude infrared photos of the area and used them to help those on the ground. This is what NASA sensors saw. From 17,000 feet above the fire, burning homes appear as bright yellow rectangles. With images like this, officials were able to locate places where the flames had jumped from the fire line but could not be detected from the ground. Two planes are involved. At 12 miles high, the ER-2, a retired military spy plane. At lower altitudes, this C-130 cargo plane. Are these homes, is this brush, is this a canyon, is there a road next to it, is there a water source? And so what we've done now with the C-130 and the ER-2 is not only map the fire, but all the cultural features involved in it. The high-flying ER-2 accomplished a first. It broadcast the information to the ground while the images were being taken by these infrared cameras beneath its wing. Minutes after the first plane returned, programmers were transforming amounts of information into images like this. Each dot you see is a flickering fire, red for embers, yellow for flames. Soon, firefighters will be getting a minute-by-minute -minute view of the fire that simply can't be had through smoke. At the same time, in a basement of the University of California in Berkeley, other computers were counting houses that were damaged and destroyed, but doing it in a way never tried before. 
If you're a state or a city official, you know there was a house here, but was it one story or two stories? Who lives here? There isn't an address left on a house for blocks around. How do you find out? Satellite. Okay, one on the left. This oversized calculator is a satellite receiver, similar to those provided by Trimble Navigation to the U.S. military during the Gulf War. Using navigation signals from space, it can record exactly where it is to within just a few meters. Each time driver Craig Conklin points, Kelly Bobbitt notes the type of damage and presses a button. In this way, the team can map hundreds of houses an hour without stopping. Later, a portable computer turns it into a map, but one that only shows where there was a structure, not what it was. For that, the satellite map is merged with the assessor's map. Using a program called AutoCAD, this man produces a computerized view with each red triangle showing not just the location, but the value of the house, the owner, and everything else that officials need to know. We'd be able to access, uh, I guess, the value of each address just by clicking and looking at it on the, on the screen. And then even looking at a road and saying, all these houses are gone, how much were they worth? It's the first time anything this fast has ever been tried, but the California Department of Forestry would like to make it a permanent part of fire protection and recovery. Even though this raging fire spewed extraordinary amounts of toxic fumes, few firefighters wore smoke masks that purify the air they breathe. This tank of compressed air is typically worn by professionals going into burning buildings. For those battling brush and forest fires, it's too heavy. So most wild firefighters end up wearing this, an ordinary bandana. But now, using electrically charged fiberglass filters and activated charcoal, environmentalists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory have developed what they feel is the best of both, a lightweight muzzle that can filter particulates such as asbestos and carbon and purify chemical fumes, such as formaldehyde. Inside, a green light indicates safety. When carbon monoxide levels rise too high, a red light flashes. They also can vibrate against the cheek as a warning. The few dozen built so far proved successful in the first test. Many victims of the Oakland Berkeley Hills fire who died succumbed not to burns, but to smoke inhalation. It is hoped that these fire masks, ranging from the very low to very high tech, will prevent such occurrences in the future. And if this mask becomes the professional standard, scenes like this will no longer take a firefighter's breath away. Next up, performance technology that's helping children. I mean, this was Wizard of Oz. This is totally Wizard of Oz. You know, pay no attention to the nerd behind the curtain. I love you. And tech according to heart. Let's see, what fun things can we put into a microwave? Bifocals? I'm going to look just like my father. My grandfather. Wait. Nobody will notice the lines if I do some cool frames or something. This is not working. For those who refuse to be seen in bifocals, we offer the perfect disguise. Verilux No-Line Bifocals. The vision you need, the look you want, none of the lines. Call for a Verilux professional near you. Come on, let me immortalize you. Kiss off. Leon Bernstein takes the pictures. They ain't looking at best, all right? That no one else can get. I killed him to get the picture. <laughs> now. I need to ask you a favor. He's about to get the one shot. You need a favor from me? That could cost him everything. To war, Artie. You're out of your league here, Bernstein. Yes, I have. Joe Pesci is the public eye. Rated R. Starts tomorrow in select areas, Friday everywhere. When we were about halfway across, they came up behind us. On the next archaeology, a great African culture and its most magnificent city, neglected for centuries, victim of ignorance and racism, now being examined with a new appreciation. What secrets will it reveal? Hello, I'm John Rhys Davis. Join me as we uncover the secrets and buried mysteries of the past with the exclusive world premiere series, Archaeology, Monday night at 9 on The Learning Channel.
Introducing Nordic Flex Gold, the newest idea in strength training that is five ways better than Soloflex. Nordic Flex Gold has linear motion to better simulate free weights. Nordic Flex Gold has isokinetic resistance to better match your natural strength curve. Nordic Flex Gold is faster to use than Soloflex. Nordic Flex Gold has electronics to monitor your performance. And best of all, Nordic Flex Gold costs one third less. Call now to order your Nordic Flex Gold. Technology for the physically disabled is hard to find and expensive because it's just not a big enough market for big companies to spend money on research and development. So what does end up in the hands of the handicapped is thanks largely to people like Dave Warner. Dave is a fellow who spends his life seeking out the cutting edge of technology and then developing ways for the disabled to use it. His latest triumph is virtual reality. Hey! Hey, there are people out here! Hi, everybody! Oh, they're alive! How you guys doing today? Fine. Oh, that's great. New and intriguing applications of virtual reality technology are being explored by researchers at the Loma Linda University Medical Center. This data glove was designed to allow architects and engineers to move objects around on a computer screen. Taking things like this and finding new applications in health and medicine is what they do here. And if I can convert their eye movement into a computer command, then we can communicate to them. Yeah, that's a great idea. Dave Warner leads the Advanced Technologies Group at the university's Neurology Research Center. Our enemy is not going away. The enemy is everywhere, and it's disease. It's poor quality in human life. And we can, we can apply technology to that problem and, and be very good at it. After securing a grant from the Parkinson's Foundation to acquire a data glove, the team went to work on its applications. One was the obvious in quantitating hand tremor for patients with Parkinson's disease, because that way we could tell the, um, how well their medication is working or the, how far their disease has progressed. Well, the data glove also offers the virtual reality application, so in a rehabilitation application, we can have uh, patients interacting with these virtual objects. So now instead of having them do arbitrary uh, tasks that aren't meaningful, we can set them up so even though they're, they're not picking up any physical object, they're doing more than just an arbitrary motion. They're actually doing a uh, very specific type of motion based on the objects they're manipulating on the screen. Recently, the owner of Sim Graphics Engineering in Pasadena, California, approached Warner with an idea test a non-commercial application of their newly developed virtual reality animation system. <laughs> what this is, is computer real-time animation. And the difference is, uh, for example, watch the eyebrows. There are pickup points on my head here feeding a computer. Think of this as a sort of a hand puppet, but instead of putting in my hand, I put my whole head into this thing. The computer fills in the blanks here. Whoa! <laughs> kind of spooky. I saw the performance animation as, a, as an opportunity to get some experience in having real kids interact with a virtual character. And so Warner used some of what he calls his institutional karma to set up a one-day trial at the medical center. A classroom setting was created with a big screen TV set to display Eduardo, a custom-designed virtual teacher. Body today? The actor who's wearing the gear can see the kids through a video camera and displayed somewhere where he is. And he can interact with them and actually teach something. And kids warmed up real quick. They didn't have any problem talking to this thing. Anybody know what this is? Yeah. I mean, this was Wizard of Oz. This is totally Wizard of Oz. You know, pay no attention to the nerd behind the curtain. I love you. The most dramatic results occurred when the video signal was routed to the rooms of some immobile patients. The potential for an interactive virtual therapist of the future became clear. How are you feeling? Not too good. What's the matter? My head a whole bunch of tests done. You had a whole bunch of tests done. It does appear that we will be able to create environments which will allow us access to areas that are being suppressed by the child and it's it's amazing to see it it's, it's something that you could you can be skeptical until you watch it happen and you go wow this is magic this panel is just three inches thin so it's designed to be mounted into a wall kind of like a window but 
what this window shows is a larger-than-life image. Think of it as a kind of copy machine that never runs out of paper or ink. You can change the image continually. If you connect it to a computer, you can have a slideshow that runs all day long of your favorite images. But you don't have to have a computer. Say you have a photograph of a favorite couple that you'd like to blow up and put up here instead. Just put it into this machine. It's a scanner, kind of a glorified fax machine. Almost instantaneously, there's your photograph. This is in black and white right now, but there is a color version in the works. It's called the Information Station. And I think it's kind of a peek at the ultra-thin television of the future. Next up, ah, the kitchen microwave. It's a miracle. You put something in, push a button, and it cooks. But you could make more efficient use of it and avoid injury if you understood a little more about how and why it works. Whoa! This portion of Discovery is sponsored in part by Verilux No-Line Bifocals. Bifocals? I'm gonna look just like my father. My grandfather. Wait, nobody will notice the lines if I do some cool frames. Or something. This is not working. For those who refuse to be seen in bifocals, we offer the perfect disguise. Verilux No-Line Bifocals. The vision you need, the look you want. None of the lines. Call for a Verilux professional near you. When you're flying north, fly the airline that leads the way with more comfort and more legroom on the only business class to more of Canada. Air Canada. It's a welcome departure. What makes the budget gourmet so different? Things that make you go, mmm. It's a lustier lasagna. Sirloin splashed with soy. Saucy shrimp nestled in linguine. All this for under two dollars. Entrees from a budget gourmet. It's budget. It's gourmet. It's both. If you need information on money, mm. health and nutrition, educating your children and more, then you need the free consumer information catalog. Do whatever it takes to make sure you get this address. New catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. They challenged the Arctic more than a century ago. Now discover the secrets of a mystery, frozen in time, on the next challenge, Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. the kitchen microwave. It's a miracle. You put something in, push a button, and it cooks. But you could make more efficient use of it and avoid injury if you understood a little more about how and why it works. The microwaves inside absorb two things, water and metal. This is an ordinary flashlight bulb. You can see what happens when the metal absorbs too much of the energy. Fireworks. But it's not entirely true that you should never put metal into a microwave oven. For example, cooking a turkey or this bagel, it's okay to put aluminum foil on top of what you're cooking, but not on the bottom. The reason is, the closer the metal is to the sides or the bottom of the oven, the more likely it is there will be sparks. Watch this. An ordinary strip of aluminum foil shaped into the form of a circle. Again, fireworks. This kind of aluminum in here could do damage to a plate. The heat is so intense. On the other hand, there is a new kind of high-tech container that will go into here that is made of metal. It's made by the Weirton Steel Company of Pennsylvania. It spreads out the metal so it's not concentrated near the bottom, and it's perfectly round with no sharp edges to create sparks. That's the next step. Now for the water part. If you put a couple of drops of water into a balloon, you can see that water absorbs it so rapidly that the microwaves cause the steam to inflate the balloon. Whoa! <laughs> and that's why marshmallows become the size of softballs. Batter up. So much for fun and games. There is a more serious point here. It's possible to heat water so much in a microwave oven that it goes beyond the boiling temperature without boiling. 
That's an accident waiting to happen. If the water superheats and you decide to add your dairy creamer, it's rare, but a full cup of coffee could blow up in your face. Metal is also the reason why we haven't been able to dry our clothes so far in some overgrown microwave. Metal buttons and studs on blue jeans as well as zippers. However, the Electric Power Research Institute has recently overcome that problem and soon you'll be able to buy your very first microwave clothes dryer. Maybe all those missing socks will start showing up in your oven. That's it until the next step. I'm Richard Hart. Thanks for joining us. For instance, cowboys, the original American icon. But were they really the heroes we make them out to be? Discover the truth about these rugged strangers as Roger Kennedy's Rediscovering America searches for the real American cowboy. Next. The changes are recorded as they happen. Now, if you're going to spend a great deal of time in a wheelchair or in bed, this could make a big difference in your life. Almost. It probably wouldn't surprise you that this is not a real umbrella. It's called the Stunbrella, and the people who sell it, Tamiami Gun Sales of Florida, claim it will completely disable an attacker without doing permanent damage. Here's what it looks like. It's an electrical arc of thousands of volts, and it does it with a 9-volt battery. Uh, we couldn't find a human volunteer to test this on, so uh, this spy will do. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. Thank you for agreeing to record our subject surreptitiously. This is your mission, should you accept. This is a recording briefcase. From 300 feet away, you'll be able to start the recording with this, and he won't be able to hear a thing. It's like a gross Okay, once more. Say, quite a stunning outfit, don't you think? When most people think of stun guns, they think of something like this. 150,000 volts. On the other hand, you could do it with this. The stun glove. Between these two electrodes, the same voltage which comes from this on my hip. Now, for those more subtle occasions, the intelligence group has come up with a cigar-shaped viper because this one penetrates the skin this portion of discovery is brought to you in part by acura automobiles Art historians will tell you it isn't unusual for a masterpiece to have been painted directly on top of another equally impressive painting, which itself was often painted on top of a third. This masterpiece, however, is the result of an exclusive 23-step paint process, the Acura Legend. Our intention was not merely to create a thing of beauty, but to create one that will stand the test of time.